Good afternoon. I'm Wes Bazell, president of the National LGBT Bar Association. I'm here with Nancy Hallis, the president of the National LGBT Bar Foundation. Thank you, Darcy, uh, for all that you and your team do to make this day and our years possible uh, for the LGBT Bar Association. It's a joy to be with all of you today and to be part of this extraordinary gathering of LGBT professionals. We are honored to be here and to tell you a little bit more about this year's Dan Bradley Awardee. The Dan Bradley Award is the National LGBT Bar Association's highest honor. It recognizes the efforts of members of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender legal advocacy community whose work has led the way in our struggle for legal equality. For those of you who are not familiar with Dan Bradley, Dan was the chair of the ABA section on individual rights and responsibilities, a commission on the rights of gay people, uh, now the ABA's SOGI committee, uh, and the former president of Legal Services Corporation. He passed away of AIDS in 1988 and was a strong advocate for our community. Uh, our award winner today is Hai Feldblum. Commissioner Feldblum has been an extensive champion for LGBTQ equality and has established herself as a leader in both our community and in the country at large. She went, oh, sorry. Um, she's a graduate of Harvard College of Law, and Kai began her career clerking for Judge Frank Coffin on the U.S. Court of Appeals for the First Circuit, and then Justice Harry M. Blackman on the U.S. Supreme Court. She went on to serve as legislative counsel to several major advocacy groups, including the AIDS Project of the ACLU from 1988 to 1990, and the Campaign for Military Service, which lobbied to overturn Don't Ask, Don't Tell. In addition to her legal activism, Hai also taught at the Georgetown Law Center. Uh, any ho lawyers, Hoya lawyers, give it up, fellow Hoyas. <laughs> Uh, and founded the Law Center's Federal Legislative Clinic, uh, where she served as executive director uh, and helped countless aspiring law students, including myself, uh, to realize their full potential. She then, this right? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm having trouble reading this morning or this afternoon. Uh, in, in 2010, Kai achieved perhaps the greatest milestone in her career when she was nominated by President Barack Obama as the first LGBTQ plus commissioner of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the EEOC. For these accomplishments and so many, many more, the National LGBT Bar is delighted to honor and present Commissioner High Feldblum with the 2019 Dan Bradley Award. Don't you always love when you, like you're clapping and then they're taking a picture and you're like, okay. Um, it really is an absolute honor to get the Dan Bradley Award. It's also wonderful to be joining the group of absolutely amazing people who have gotten this award for the past 19 years. First one was given 19 years ago. Um, it was given to Nan Hunter who actually started the LGBT Rights Project and the AIDS Project at the ACLU. First time a mainstream legal organization had a lesbian, gay rights and AIDS project. Um, I'm also particularly thrilled to be married to Nan Hunter <laughs> and very thrilled to be in a country where I legally can be married to the love of my life. Thank you. <laughs> So 
So you heard that Dan Bradley was the chair of what was called the Committee on Gay Rights of the ABA's Section on Individual Rights and Responsibilities. And it may not seem like a big deal to us now, right, that we have the SOGI Committee, the Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity Committee of the ABA, but it was a big deal then. And Dan Bradley had courage in terms of getting that committee started and being the chair. But courage and perseverance marked the career of Dan Bradley. You heard he was head of the Legal Services Corporation from 1979 to 1982. What you may not know is there was a concerted effort by the Reagan administration at that time to dismantle legal services, which provided incredibly important legal protection for low-income folks, and Dan Bradley pulled together a coalition of conservatives, liberals, Democrats, Republicans, and kept that agency going. And in an interview he gave to the New York Times after he stepped down, and after, for the first time, he came out as a gay man, he said, it was horrible living a closeted life but he wasn't gonna come out and be worried that he was gonna harm that effort. That's something he had to decide at that time. And he said to the New York Times, I think I helped save the Legal Services Corporation. I think I now have to try to help save myself by being out. And you know what, in 1983, he worked to get, have the ABA adopt a resolution to prohibit discrimination based on sexual orientation. It went nowhere. They finally, ABA, passed that resolution in 1989, and Dan Bradley did not live to see that, because he died in 1988 at age 47. Thank goodness we have an award named for someone like that that lets us remember the work that was done. So, Dan Bradley fought for social justice. That's why we are all here today. That's why we are here as a community. We're here to listen to people at panels, to talk to other folks between sessions over food and wine, share our highs, our lows, right? We are here as a community to gain strength from each other, to support each other in achieving social justice. And to me, when I think about social justice, it means a world in which everyone can live a life of honesty, integrity, and dignity. That means being able to live openly and honestly with, about who you are, whether you're lesbian, gay, bisexual, whether you're transgender, you're genderqueer, you're non-binary. For all the people who sometimes make fun of all the different words, well, how funny would it feel if you were one of those words, if you were non-binary, and people are like, oh, and I can't believe we have to talk, right? It's about living a life of honesty, integrity, and dignity, whatever, whoever you are, and economically, that you have a job, that you can buy food and have housing. That's living a life of honesty, integrity, and dignity. So, one last thing I wanna say, is that law and culture work together in a dynamic, synergistic manner to create this social justice. And one example that I know we're gonna be talking about at the plenary tomorrow, thinking about how it is that LGBT people are now, some of the courts, Supreme Court's about gonna decide whether Discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity is a form of sex discrimination. I will tell you that when Congress passed the law in 1964, there were gay and trans people at the time who thought, well, we're covered, because it seems so logical. We now know from a brief that was put in by the historians to the Supreme Court cases that there were people at the EOC who thought that. I didn't know that. By the time I got there, culture had been such that argument was hard, but cultural logic changes, legal logic can follow. And some of the changes that have happened in the law with regard to that is because of culture and law operating together. 
you'll have to go tomorrow to get all the, un, you know, specifics of it. But, and this is the last thing in terms of culture and law, I am, I am so happy to see some of my colleagues here from Morgan Lewis. Can you just raise your hands? So, <laughs> um, so I took a big career change move five months ago. Uh, although I would have been happy to have spent my third term on the commission, I guess other people or one person had a different view. <laughs> so, silver lining, I became a partner at Morgan Lewis and a director of workplace culture consulting, which is not a title that actually existed at the law firm before. Um, great work in terms of internal diversity stuff, but this is about going out and working with employers to create what we call safe, respectful, and inclusive workplaces. And a lot of the energy of that comes out of the Me Too movement, that's why some employers are focusing on it. But the main thing that I and my colleague, Sharon Masling, who came over with me, the main thing we're pushing out is safe, respectful, and inclusive for everybody on any basis, including LGBTQ. And even deeper, safe and respectful for everyone, regardless of status. We don't want the equal opportunity jerks out there in the workplace. Everyone should be able to feel safe and respected at work. That is the core of living a life of honesty, integrity, integrity and dignity. Dignity at work. I am so glad to be in this work and this struggle with all of you. Thank you. <laughs>